currently sitting in my car parked down the street from a restaurant after having had the most terrifying experience of my life. I'll do my best to describe with as much clarity as possible the absolute fucking nightmare that just transpired inside the burger joint. I'm still really shaken by what happened, so forgive me if I gloss over certain details. My brain's still trying to process the dark unreality of it all. Early in the night, I'd been sitting at home, hungry and bored. Terrible combination, so... I drove to a nearby fast food restaurant for a 2 a.m. burger and fries. It wasn't the first time I'd done that, but it might be the last. I went in, placed my order, and stood a few paces away from the counter to wait for my food. A few moments later, I heard a weird... whooshing sound. Like flags being battered by the wind, and I saw a dark shape move with incredible speed outside the front of the restaurant. A few seconds later, the front doors were thrown open, and a thing out of some ultra-cosmic nightmare walked into the restaurant. Now, I said walked, but really, the thing just sort of hovered. There were no feet to be seen. Its body was encased in this shadowy, cloud-like substance of aura from which blue sparks issued and fizzled at random. Appendages, whether they were arms or legs, I couldn't say, hung limply from the crowd and shrouded body, and a lofty conoid projection, presumably the head, sat atop the cloud form. Eyes, or at least dark orbs which resembled eyes, were situated all around this cephalic-like projection, and several bulbous purple-skinned nodes served possibly as inhuman ears or with the apparatus of some other less fathomable sense. Obviously, I pulled out my phone. After recovering from the initial shock of the monstrous sight, when I turned on my camera, all I saw on the screen was darkness. Nothing of the strangeness before me was detected by my phone's camera. A glancing to my left towards the counter, I saw an expression of disappointment on the face of one of the cashiers, also holding her phone. I knew that her phone was similarly affected. Apparently heedless of our attempts to capture it on video, the creature ap approached the counter, but rather than smashing it to pieces or attempting to ensnare the people behind it, the creature stopped a few inches away from the surface and angled the column head structure towards the menu board above. In a display of breath-stealing grotesqueness, the head remained still while the ocular orbs situated around it moved. Instead, some orbited the head, Others sunk inward or ballooned outward. It was in this manner that the thing scanned the items displayed on the board menu. The scene was it was horrific. It was unwholesome. An, an, an exhibition of sight and analysis, wholly alien to human behavior. And then, out, out of nowhere, I... I heard a voice. I knew at once, by its guttural yet machine-like tone, that it belonged to the, ab the abysmal patron... All right, place a normal human order. Pay, get out of here. No need to attract any special attention. Just be cool, Bulgark. You can do this. These words were not spoken by any mouth that I could see. They were transmitted audibly. I, mean, I, I heard them in my head. As if they'd been broadcast into my skull along some psychic channel. I saw the restaurant workers flinch, the, the voice being transmitted directly into their brains as well. The creature, who... I guess called itself Bulgark, continued its examination of the menu, wholly ignorant of the fact that its thoughts had just been broadcasted to the other occupants of the building. In a voice that was like the full-speed collision of two semi-trucks, including the agonizing screams of those trapped in the subsequent highway catastrophe, the creature voiced its order to the cashier with no obvious organ of speech. Though the cloud above its body did shift, as if allowing for the passage of sound waves through it, yeah, uh, can I get, uh, let's see, four, no, six of those triple bacon cheeseburgers, and could I have the accompanying fries to be dipped in cheese? Yeah, just the whole batch dunked in a vat of cheese, if possible, and then, then I'll have, uh, let's go with a modest 200 chicken nuggets, and uh, give me about 30 of the little barbecue sauce, can no, no, I will have the honey mustard instead, thank you. And I'm not doing anything tomorrow, so I guess I'll have ten of your mini tacos. The chicken ones, please. Yeah, I, I think that'll be it. Wait, no, Bulgark. That wasn't a normal order. Who orders food without a drink? Do you want them to think you're weird? Do you want them to start suspecting things? Think, Bulgark. Think! Oh, and, uh, diet cola, please. Good save, Bar. Nice. 
Soon they'll call you Blugark, wearer of human skin, or may- maybe something even cooler. The cashier's mouth was now agape, and as were the rest of them, her co-workers. I-, I felt the desperate urge to get them to play along, lest we all suffer some awful fate at the hands of this morphological, unimagined creature. I, I gestured broadly and openly towards them, concealing from Varg's bizarrely oriented sight due to the collective the focus of its freely moving eyes upon the little shelves of cookies on the counter. The cashiers noticed my gestures and understanding their intent, assumed faces and postures of a slightly rigid casualness with great reluctance. Hmm, do I deserve a cookie? I did soar here from the garden about a time. And I am participating in that community swim through the ever-blank channels of Seoul on Tuesday. No, no, not tonight. You stick to your diet, Blark. You can almost fit into your old planet shell. Do not quit now. The eye orbs then focused at once upon the face of the cashier, and I briefly feared she would scream out in terror, but impressively she kept her cool, keeping her bewilderment and fear in check. That'll be, uh... Two... Two hundred and sixteen dollars and thirty-seven cents. The dark nimbus around Bogart shifted, the arcs of electricity surging intently for a moment, and then an object was violently launched from the middle of the mass. It landed wetly atop the counter and squirmed there for several moments before finally, fatally, assuming a state of morbid immobility. Cashier's eyes went wide, and I watched as one of the other workers collapsed from the sheer frightfulness of the situation. On the counter was a mass of what appeared to be bones, connected by oily and pink tissue. In addition to the bones, there were the corpses of ugly, black, alarmingly large critters. Well, they might have been common insects of some prehistoric age or a hypogeal biome attached to the mass by a brown, mucus-like substance. Ulgark looked from the cashier to the counter, then its cloud cloak shifted and surged again. Bark, you idiot! They need human money, the papery stuff. They probably can't even make change for a cache of condemned, condensed flesh anyway. Sorry, I was just at the thing, the casino. Forgot to exchange my chips. <laughs> the mass, the cache, was then reabsorbed back into Bulgark's body by the cloud, which had briefly expanded to envelop half the counter in a mere second. A fat wad of cash was then launched, landing in the oily puddle left by the cache. The cashier took the stained money with a trembling hand, counted out what was owed, then returned to the rest of the counter. This was incorporated back into Bulgark's body in the same aforementioned manner of cloud extension and absorption. She told him that his order would be ready soon, and he politely thanked her. Stunned, barely holding on to my sanity, I stepped a little further away as to allow Bulgark to pass. It hovered by me, and I caught a whiff of the foulest most putrid scent I'd ever smelled. The thing reeked of death, decay, and moldy cheese. It emitted a stench so powerfully offensive that I briefly considered forsaking my order and leaving the store. But I was terribly hungry, and I had paid. So I stayed. Bulgark went to the dining area, examined the area in the monstrous and multi-eyed way, and eventually went on to hover above the seat of a booth in the very back. Once settled, he began to reflect on his day. In his head, of course. I couldn't bring myself to repeat, even vaguely, the awful atrocities and hyper-violent reveries he recalled and reimagined as he waited for his bounty of food. Horrified, repulsed, I sat down at a table, far away from the ruminating horror, to give my trembling knees a break. Perhaps fifteen minutes later, a parade of workers exited the kitchen, each bearing a tray loaded with food. They all looked exhausted, their uniforms stained with liquid cheese and sweat. Four passed by my table, but the fifth stopped and laid his tray in front of me. I thanked him, and he absentmindedly responded, You're welcome, while fearfully eyeing the creature across the room. The workers disposed of their trays onto three tables, which Bulgark had drawn towards himself, and then left unscathed. They practically fought against each other to get back into the kitchen, where I'm sure they shared a sigh and maybe even a few tears of immense relief. Just as I was about to bite into my burger, poorly assembled, but that was understandable, 
I received yet another psychically shared transmission. Oh, look at that guy's tray. Poor guy must be broke. It's terrible. What is it the humans are always saying? Be charitable and generous. All right, Blarg. Now's your chance to prove without a doubt that you're one of them. Give him some of your food. He'll think to himself, wow, what a kind and completely normal human. Yeah, that'll do it for sure. Indistinctively turning around at the first reference of my presence, I saw one of the overloaded trays lift off from the table and hover in midair for a moment before my brain was blasted with yet another transmission. No! Humans can't control things with their minds. They only have the one, and they use it to do other things like sing songs to themselves and, and reminisce fondly on their most embarrassing moments. No, Blarg, give it to him with an arm, like a proper human. The tray wobbled and then fell to the table, and a black, shadow-fringed tentacle emerged from the dark cloud. The handless appendage flailed around for a moment before steadying itself and then seizing the tray, and then from across the room a, a distance of at least thirty feet. The tray was brought to me by that apparently limitless tentacle. It set the tray next to mine. It was then drawn back into Bulgark's body like the cord of a vacuum returning to the chassis. The retracted limb had left a thin, slimy sheen on the tray and a few of the chicken tacos. The affected tacos seemed to dissolve before my eyes, as if glazed or sprayed with some highly caustic element. Bulgark's eyes now focused on me, blinked rapidly, uncannily. And I interrupt this terrifying performance as an expression of good cheer, like that of a friendly stranger smiling to you from across the bar after having sent a pitcher of beer to your table. In response, I gave the abomination entity a, a meek thumbs up, and after a few seconds, more of that unsettling eye flashing it turned its attention to the food-laden trays beneath it. With no further thoughts, Bulgark began eating. The cloud again shifted, now becoming a perpetually typhonic cyclone to which food was drawn at random burgers, fries, chicken nuggets, and tacos that were sucked into the torrential vortex, all of them over two hundred dollars worth of food that consumed within seconds. Once the trays were cleared, Bulgar casually sipped at its soda, an action facilitated by a slightly less chaotic suctioning. Drop by drop, the beverage was drawn into the whirling cloud. Beyond disturbed, I only managed to eat a few fries and Take a few bites of my burger before feeling full, not wanting to offend the horror and potentially incur its assuredly hellish wrath. I forced myself to finish most of what it had shared with me, even the slime-stained tacos, which tasted unsurprisingly awful, as if I had instead eaten layer upon layer of the yellowed thyme soil linen of some antediluvian mummy. I then covertly deposited the rest of the meal into a nearby trash receptacle after swiftly leaving my table. Without turning towards Blarg, I, I passed the counter, mouthed good luck to the fear-stricken workers peeking through the kitchen's little window, and left the restaurant. As I stepped onto the parking lot, I heard one final thought transmitted, and it sent me running madly across the lot to my vehicle. Oh, so hungry. I should have ordered those cookies. Now they're taking them away for the night. What a bummer. Hmm. Once I finish this drink, I'll see if that other human is still around. Maybe. It's not on them. If they haven't left. Gotta see what organs humans can live without first. We just... gall it real quick. I'm sure you can understand and even forgive my subsequent violation of virtually every traffic law as I... I sped away from the restaurant. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video. I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. This past year has been rough. I've been gone for quite a while trying to get things um, organized for my own life, and Patreon subscribers, you guys who subscribe everywhere, th this, this has kept me afloat in turbulent waters. So I want to give a very special thank you to Jordan Humble, Diana Krause, Disciple, Strategy Wolf Emoji, Sullyman, Brandon Mendoza, Brimstone Pandemonium, Kaltuna, 
William Wellington, Scruffy the Janitor, Brenna Crow, Lakeda Canizales, Smiley the Psychotic, Jenna, Dante Kincaid, Simba's Bloody Mojo, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Primarch, M, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Verbal Horror, Amber Clark, Jay Kearns, Mike, Himbo Jerry, Crusader Chocobo, Corbin Dallas, Estebean, Seclude, Salty Surprise, Red Shadow Cat, Turtle Man, Cryolinian, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Dirt Diver 030, Voice of Sand, Psychomel, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Sashi Sasaku, Croconut 509, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Hades Nephew, Acid System, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. To all you guys and everybody who's included in the description down below, thank you so much for everything that you guys have done for me, and thank you so much for being here when times get difficult. And I can't always be around to make content. I really appreciate your support and I cannot thank you enough. And that goes to everybody who watches these videos. That goes to everybody who's subbed here and anybody who has <laughs> ever liked a creepypasta story ever. I wish you all the best. Sweet dreams.